He took office in a contentious power transfer last year. Mohammed Wahid was accused by the opposition of seizing power in an illegal coup. There wasn't a coup, and he was not ousted. It was very clear that it wasn't a coup, that he resigned on his own uh, volition. He's now running in a national election against three other candidates, one of which is his old boss and former president, Mohammed Nasheed. There have been months of intermittent protests and sporadic violence triggered when the previous government was ousted. So after a year and a half of political turmoil, people in the Maldives are voting on who they want to lead their country next. They're hoping the presidential election will bring back stability and economic security. The stakes are high for this election, only the second since democracy was introduced to the country. The economy is in bad shape with high unemployment and inflation, and religious conservatism is on the rise. So if elected, can Wahid unite a deeply polarized people? And can he bring back democracy to the island nation? We'll find out as the president of the Maldives talks to Al Jazeera. President uh, Mohammed Wahid, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. So you're facing the first national election uh, since a contentious power transfer to you last year. The country is deeply polarized. How confident are you of victory? I'm quite confident. Uh, that we will be able to win this election. Uh, most important thing is uh, we will have our second um, democratic election in this country as um, scheduled um, according to our constitution. Um, the election is supposed to be held every five years and um, uh, we are just coming up to the five-year mark. So um, I'm really happy that we've been able to um, uh, continue to work towards um, a free and fair election. You're running as an independent uh, candidate. So do you have the political weight to be able to win this presidential election without the backing of a party? Yes, my running mate uh, comes from the second largest political party in this country. And um, uh, I'm running as an independent candidate because the constitution in Maldives actually doesn't require presidential candidate to come from any political party. In fact, political parties are not even uh, recognized um, uh, in the constitution as being important for presidential elections. Um, so um, I figured that at this time, it's important for me to be uh, able to work with all political parties. And uh, my, um, uh, my feeling is that uh, this is going to be another coalition government. So what you're saying is we will be seeing a runoff? I think so. I think so. There are too many candidates for us to come out with a clear um, a majority in the first round. And what will the implications of that be for you if there's a runoff? In that case, I will work with other political parties and uh, form a coalition. We had the same experience uh, in 2008. The 2008 government was formed um, by a coalition. Uh, in the first round, nobody won a clear majority, 50% uh, plus one vote. And what coalitions will you be working with? Well, you see, um, there are a number of political parties. Um, some of them are competing with me. But uh, I believe that, uh, you know, we have run a campaign that is uh, not too divisive. And uh, when we come to a second round, uh, some of my um, uh, competitors uh, will also be um, uh, happy to work with me. There are calls for this election in particular to be free and fair. The United Nations Secretary General as well, Ban Ki-moon, and calling uh, for them to be credible and peaceful. Uh, you know you're being watched by the international community very closely uh, considering the uh, violence that we saw in 2012. So what's been done to ensure that they will be free yes, and fair? Yes, it's really important for us that this election is free. Uh, and fair and transparent. Um, that's why uh, government has invited um, uh, election observers from outside. And we are very happy that the European Union, um, uh, the Commonwealth, um, will be here. Um, and uh, we also have uh, um, representatives of the United Nations here. Speaking of 2012 and uh, fairness, there was violence, there was unrest, uh, there was demonstrations uh, when you 
uh, took office when you came into office uh, a, half, a year and a half ago, some calling at the time, in fact, for uh, your resignation. So if you do not win uh, this election, will you respect the democratic process? Absolutely. I have already said that I will respect the outcome of the elections and I will support and work with whoever wins this election. It's really important for us that democracy works. The transition to democracy is not easy. Um, for us, I think uh, we are going through historic times. Um, we have been fortunate enough to be able to continue this transition uh, without major disruptions in the country. Um, this country has gone through a very autocratic uh, regime uh, for a very long time. And for us to be able to uh, embrace uh, a Western-style democracy uh, in a 100% Muslim country and be able to move along um, uh, without major breakdowns is, I think, uh, something we are very grateful for. Well, that democratic process was questioned by some. Last year, the former president, uh, Mohammed Nasheed, at the time, you were his vice president, in fact, and when he was ousted last year, he called it a coup. He said it was staged by the opposition, it was backed by you, and even the former president, uh, Ma'moun Abdel Qayyum. Was it a coup? It wasn't a coup, and he was not ousted. The best way I knew how to deal with that accusation was to set up a commission of inquiry, national commission of inquiry. And we worked with uh, Mr. Nasheed's uh, people to identify uh, people for that commission. We included one of his representatives and we also accepted bringing in an international judge from Singapore to co-chair the commission. So um, they came up with their findings. It was very clear that it wasn't a coup that he resigned on his own uh, volition. Of course, there were pressures on him uh, from street protests and so on. He says he resigned under pressure. He, the only pressure he had was from street protests. Uh, there was no other force on him. Uh, it's very clear in the outcome of the investigation. So you say it's not a coup. How would you describe it? And what was your role in it? OK, um, you see, uh, as I said, democratic transition is not easy. We have a new constitution that we got in 2008. It has never been tried before. And uh, the president was finding it difficult to uh, govern um, because of the uh, uh, way in which the new constitution has, uh, in a way, removed many of the powers of the president. For the first time in our country, we have independent branches of government. Uh, and the head of state uh, has no authority to interfere in the work of the other two branches of government. He tried to dismantle the judiciary. He arrested judges. He arrested members of parliament. So he really broke the principle for which we were working for. And that's why he had street protests for continuously for more than three weeks. And he found it impossible for, to govern. That's why he resigned. After the um, ouster, for lack of better words, uh, however, there were uh, protests also against uh, yourself and, and your government at the time. But let me ask you this. Um, speaking to local media just recently, in fact, uh, Mohammed Nasheed says that under his government, if he wins this presidential election, then you will be investigated for your role in what he calls a coup. Does that worry you at all? No, it doesn't worry me uh, because uh, I trust that he will follow the rule of law. And uh, since I have um, clear conscience on this, I don't have to worry about it. Well, there are those that, in fact, feel that his popularity has now soared, actually, because of the events of last year. What do you make of that? Because he has a following. He has a political party. Uh, his political party members are supporting him. But um, my sense of it is that uh, his supporters have actually declined. Uh, although um, his activists are more um, uh, vigorous than uh, other political activists in the country, that doesn't necessarily indicate a growing support for him. And I would not be surprised um, this time if he actually comes second to me. And under your pre presidency, uh, some critics say, in fact, that uh, behind the scenes, the strings are being pulled uh, by the former president before Mohammed Nasheed, who ruled the country for 30 years, Qayyum. OK, Nasheed made those accusations because he wanted the international community to believe that we were going back to, to the old dictatorship. So that he had to show somebody uh, as pulling strings. But that's not true. 
I have tried to um, govern this country fairly and uh, without interference from others. This is why I invited all political parties to join the government, try to form a government of national unity. And until today, um, even my competitors are still in government. Let's move on to the topic of conservatism because I think it's, uh, it's one that uh, people are watching closely because there are some politicians who want the country to adhere to more uh, stricter Sharia uh, laws in the country. What do you say to that? You see, um, this is a 100% Muslim country. And uh, always this country has had a mix of uh, Sharia and civil law. In fact, um, um, Sharia uh, is considered uh, the foundation of our constitution. Um, so, um, as you said, there are uh, people who have more conservative interpretations. And um, uh, we are looking at uh, countries, Islamic countries, that are more progressive and see how they deal with those issues. Issues like uh, mm, cutting off someone's hand, for example, for, uh, for theft. These are the kinds of things uh, that other Muslim countries have dealt with. And uh, therefore, uh, we need to follow more closely uh, how they have been able to resolve those issues. So where do you see the role of religion in politics? In this country, um, religion will play uh, an important role in politics. Uh, see, uh, Mr. Nasheed was trying to make it a secular state. Uh, but because our country is 100% Muslim, and at that Sunni Muslims, um, most of our people feel that it's important to maintain that uh, uh, religious uh, unity and harmony in this country. Is extremism on the rise in your country? No, it's not. Um, there have been incidences, uh, but um, it's been some time ago now. Um, there isn't particularly a uh, rise of extremism in Maldives, not more than any other Islamic country, for example. Are the main Islamic parties here and the supporters able to mobilize the masses? How much strength do they have when it comes to the population? Um, if it's a major issue uh, on Islam, um, then the Islamic parties are able to mobilize people because the people of the, most of the people in this country are religious people, and uh, you know they believe uh, uh, in Islam and uh, its tenets. So um, uh, whenever there is um, a major issue then people uh, get mobilized around it. So how do you exactly balance um, this conservatism and religion when it comes to tourism? That is your main uh, source of income and your main industry because when you go to Mali and when you visit the islands it's uh, two different worlds really. We are very lucky because uh, we have so many islands and we have a unique type of tourism where uh, we have one resort uh, on one island. Um, so, and there is no um, local uh, village on those islands. Therefore, the uh, tourist hotels are uh, fairly independent and uh, people are allowed to come in there and you know, be in uh, a modern um, high class um, hotel. Um, people don't mind it. Um, and many Maldivians go and work there. Um, generally, the Maldivian people are uh, very open-minded and uh, somewhat uh, liberal. Speaking of the economy, it's in pretty bad shape. You have uh, quite high uh, inflation. What are your priorities in tackling uh, the economy if you are elected president? You see, our economy is a major priority for us. Uh, we have to um, do two things. First, we have to expand um, the, the two major industries that we have, the tourism and fisheries. And then secondly, um, we have to also diversify the economy. We can't be just dependent on these two industries. So we are looking at other um, uh, possibilities. Um, we are also uh, doing all, our, uh, all we can at the moment to try to um, um, cut down on our expenses and to, to try to bring down the deficit. Last year, our budget deficit was about 12% of GDP. This year, it's come down to about 2.5% now. And uh, we believe that in the next two years, we'll be able to get rid of the budget deficit. What about uh, unemployment? 
Unemployment is there, uh, particularly among um, young people. Um, that is particularly because um, the economy doesn't provide the kind of jobs that young people want. Um, they and, want uh, when you say it's there, what is the figure? Uh, it's about 27% um, for um, young men and for uh, as high as about 40% uh, for women. And um, this unemployment is uh, largely because we don't have the kind of jobs that young people want in our economy. They want jobs with dignity and um, respect. They don't want to do m m menial work. Let's, uh, let's turn to a contract uh, that was um, quite um, contentious as well. You terminated a $500 million worth contract with an Indian firm. Uh, for an airport project. That was a deal that was signed by the former president, uh, Mohammad Nasheed, in 2010. Uh, the termination was seen as a major setback for relations between the Maldives and India. Does that not concern you, considering the aid that India gives uh, to the Maldives and the uh, long-standing relations and the trade between uh, the two countries? I think India understands uh, that uh, this was a commercial contract. Uh, which was badly uh, uh, put together. Um, President Nasheed signed this contract against the wishes of the parliament, against the law. And because of this, um, parliament did not approve one of the um, you know, taxes that was supposed to be collected. As a result, the government had to pay this company out of uh, uh, the government budget instead of uh, getting money from the, uh, from the company. So we ended up um, basically uh, giving out our airport and having to pay somebody to run it, although it is one of the most profitable uh, companies uh, in this country. You've been criticized uh, for being anti-Indian, for having anti-Indian sentiments, and that is why uh, you terminated the contract. Do you have anti-Indian no, sentiments? That's not true. That's absolutely not true. We just signed a contract for, with an Indian company for the um, you know, management and processing of uh, waste in the Greater Mali area. It's a multi-million dollar project as well. And there are other companies here from India that are doing really well, uh, particularly in tourism sector. There are many resorts that are owned by Indian companies. We have a very close relationship with India. This is one case. This one case should not uh, spoil that relationship. And um, a lot of these um, stories about bad relationship with India is created by uh, Mr. Nasheed and his supporters uh, for domestic uh, political purposes. And what about China? China has uh, quite an influence now in the Maldives, relations growing as well. This is, um, you know, like all countries, um, every country is trying to improve its trade uh, and relations with uh, China because China is a giant and a growing economy. Um, so um, in the same spirit, uh, Maldives is also trying to uh, strengthen its uh, trade links with uh, China. Uh, there is no reason for India to worry about it. We've said it several times and there is, uh, India can see for itself um, the kind of relationship that we have with uh, China. Um, uh, there is really nothing for them to worry about. Amnesty International uh, put out a report a couple of months ago, uh, President uh, Wahid, um, right after, in fact, uh, the transfer of power in 2012, saying that uh, your security forces committed serious human rights violations, including beatings, arbitrary detentions, targeted attacks on opposition supporters. No one has yet been accountable uh, for any of these claims. It shows that there, there are some serious uh, failings in the justice system. Um, the justice system here is not perfect. Uh, we are going through a huge transition. We have institutions that uh, um, uh, we have had for many, many years. And it takes time for us to change the culture and practice in all these institutions. No institution is perfect yet. And that goes for the judiciary. It goes for the police force and also the parliament and for the executive branch. Um, we just have to keep working at it. Um, our democracy is so young, um, it's really uh, not fair for the international community to expect uh, perfection. Uh, this we is have, a human rights organization, yes. it's not an international community, and, right. and we they've have, come here and conducted uh, reports. Why has yes. no one been held accountable yet That's under not your true. watch? We have had people accountable, investigations have been done. There is an independent police integrity commission. 
they have come out with their report. The Human Rights Commission is independent. They also have come out with their report. Several officers have already been investigated and, uh, and some of them have been convicted. So it's not true when they say that uh, it's taken time. You know, um, people who um, created chaos in this country uh, with the change of government uh, last year, who actually burnt down some of the police stations so on, some of them have also or not had um, sentences because the judicial process takes a long time and today the executive doesn't interfere in the judiciary. Uh, we have to be patient, we have to be perseverant, we have to let the institutions work and solve these problems. You know, um, I wish um, these institutions worked faster and uh, you know, were able to uh, meet justice quickly. So do you take responsibility that these things did happen under your watch? There were um, confrontations. Uh, the police had to uh, uh, bring the situation under control because they were violent. And uh, that was um, one incident they are referring to on the 8th of, um, 8th of uh, February, the day after the change took place. Um, the cabinet was not in place at the moment. Uh, I had sworn in only a few hours before that. So um, uh, the police uh, uh, did what they had to do. But our police force is also going through um, major changes. Human rights organizations also highlight uh, the fact that there are attacks on human rights defenders as well as journalists in the country. And there's quite a focus now as well on one particular case which I'd like to ask you about and that is a case of uh, flogging, a form of punishment that is implemented in the Maldives. Recently there was a 15 year old girl, her sentence of flogging was overturned uh, by your government. Uh, she was uh, raped and then sentenced to 100 lashes from what we understand. That is not going to happen anymore. A human rights organization is very pleased about uh, that ruling. but. What are you doing about this form of punishment? It's being described by organizations as violating the most basic standards of human rights. Um, you know, the um, certain sentences in Islam, uh, in the Sharia, uh, called Had, um, they are um, implemented in Maldives and has been uh, as long as we can remember. Uh, in this particular case um, of the 15-year-old uh, girl, was totally uh, unjustifiable. Uh, she was a victim, uh, she was abused, and um, uh, uh, f for some reason she got sentenced. And, uh, and I protested, I spoke out against it. Um, none of the politicians, not even Mr. Nasheed, spoke out uh, against that. I spoke out, I was criticized by several people, including Adalat Party. Um, and then I asked the Attorney General to intervene on her behalf. Um, sentences cannot be overturned by the executive branch now under our new constitution. Uh, it has to be by the uh, judiciary. So judiciary took a little bit of time uh, to address that and I'm really happy that they overturned that sentence. And that's, uh, uh, you know, that gives me confidence that the judiciary is beginning to uh, change also. And um, I have confidence that uh, given time, we will be able to establish and strengthen our democratic institutions in this country. Maldivians uh, tasted democracy really for three years, uh, President Wahid. How does democracy look for you going forward? Democracy will go forward. Democracy, uh, real democracy started in 2008 with the new constitution. Um, democracy has continued uh, even in the last two years. President Nasheed did not uh, free the media. Uh, he held on to the public uh, television and radio station. Two, two weeks after I became president, I freed uh, the media. This is one of the few countries in the world where the uh, government does not have a newspaper or television or a radio station. For the first time for sure in Maldives, this last two years has been the only time when the government did not control the media. We have several television stations now several newspapers, and we compete with everybody else um, in the uh, media market. President Mohammed Rahim, thank you for talking to Al Jazeera. Thank you.